Hi, Louise. Hello from uh, New York City. Hello. How are you? How are you? Very well, thanks. Yeah. I, um, I'm excited that you're in your drawing room. I can see that beautiful brick color behind you. But before we chat about it, I feel like the last year has been such a blur for you with the big move back home uh, to England from Los Angeles. How has the transition been? Well, I think it's been a bit of a blurry year for everyone. And I feel really lucky that we got back. Um, we actually managed to move into our new house in England a month before lockdown. So I count my lucky stars. But we decided to move back after 11 years in LA. So we had a good innings. Um, and I mean, it was a mix of reasons, really, but predominantly just missing family and friends and England itself. Um, so we moved back with our toddler daughter, Honor, in October, and we had already bought a house. I think we got the keys about three weeks later and then started renovations, which were pretty quick, considering we did quite a lot. It's, I just can't believe how fast you've been able to renovate and decorate the entire house and get it featured in the most wonderful magazine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you always had, um, I mean, I associate you with style, but you have always had this tension for um, home decor? I, yes, but I think it's really grown. And I don't know if that is also age. I feel like I talk to more of my friends now and most of I'm, I'm, my background is the fashion industry. And I worked in magazines for many years and you know, was always reporting from Fashion Week rather than falling in love with sofas and lampshades. Sure. But I think when you get a bit older, I don't know, you start to just feel like, oh, I think I'd rather buy that lamp than the pair of shoes. And it's, it's a nice shift into wanting to make a real nest. And I think more than ever right now, people crave that comfort and they're looking with new eyes at the four walls that surround them and thinking, well, hold on, this isn't just a living room anymore. This is a study, a school, a restaurant, a cafe. Right. <laughs> and uh, for a while, it really was those things completely exclusively. So I've, um, yeah, I've just enjoyed that process a lot. I mean, I, did, I think we managed to do it so quickly because we were quite organized and I had a bit of a plan and I also bought so many items before we even had a house which my husband would like roll his eyes like are you kidding you've bought another antique we haven't even found a house but I do feel like and I'm sure you agree when you find something you love particularly if it's an antique because it's the only one you ha you know you'll find a place for it no matter what I totally agree. Well, where did you keep it all? In Los Angeles or in England somewhere? No, so I actually really annoyed my parents um, by keeping it all in my old bedroom in my childhood house. And at first they were like, I kind of hid it from my dad. I would just, every time I was back in England or I'd have stuff delivered there, my mum would sneak things upstairs. Honestly, I felt like I was 13 again. And then in the end it became, so, I mean, there was literally furniture piled up. My dad was like, remove it. <laughs> So and funny. I dad, dad used to be the same way about that. Mine is because I we live in New York City, so we don't have that much space. But I am the same way. I love antiquing and I love finding treasures. And the same sentiment that if you don't buy it, somebody else will, and then it's yes. the only one, and you've missed the opportunity. So I have stuff also stored at my parents' place. As really, well. so I do. Now, did you have like binders of magazine articles that you had sort of pulled out to give you inspiration when designing this house or, or what is sort, did. how did you go about it I did I love magazines I still love the tangible paper and so I would rip things out or brochures or anything that I saw even if it was a paint color and um, I also have a big folder on my phone of, of sort of house inspiration and I do love Pinterest as well I think Pinterest is an interesting one because you can go down so many rabbit holes and get a bit distracted because there's so much on there. So right. it's, you've got to keep quite focused. Um, but I, I love, I think you need those pictures. It's your mood board, isn't it? Otherwise you can kind of go off course a bit. But I was definitely planning out each room, especially once we had bought the house, but we hadn't got access to it yet. I had taken so many pictures and I was like, I think that color would be good there. And um, <laughs> I'm actually sitting on um, a cane chair that we, I bought the pair in a flea market in LA, Fairfax flea market for $250 the pair. 
And, um, and I re-upholstered them before we left because I was planning it already. So I'll show you the fabric. It's actually uh, Lisa Fine. And it's oh, they look beautiful. Thanks. They were leather before, but they look like a new pair of chairs now. So it's nice to kind of give it a new life. So when you, so you lived in Los Angeles for 10 years, I think that you have like very beautiful and traditional style. Were you um, influenced by LA or, or did you sort of, did your taste have to adapt at all while living there? It's a really good question. I think when I moved there, I was only early 20s and I definitely liked the mid-century it can be quite clean and I did like that but I've since gone off it a bit I think maybe I just got overloaded with it in LA and it doesn't lend itself very well to rainy cold weather and I think funny enough on the east coast like I can see all the pictures behind you and stacked up books it gives a home such a warmth and a layering and a texture and I missed that because I think also homes need to feel lived in and real and you need to be have the dog that comes and sits on the sofa and it's not like oh you've messed it up let me just redo right. that whole you know that's not real real life and so I think there are some beautiful homes in California in LA but some of them I found a bit soulless actually in the end because they were just so perfect and clean. Beige. Well and I think one of the things that you've done so beautifully in your house is layer. Um, whether it's with color or with texture or with treasures that you find um, while like looking through junk shops or vintage so shops. Do you tend to look for certain things or stay away from certain things when you're vintage shopping? It's funny, I think it depends where you are in your search. So by that, I mean, at the very beginning, I had so much stuff to get and I did have a long list, but I was very open because I thought, you know, I'll find a home for that. Now, when I go, I have to be a bit more controlled on myself because we really don't have space for any more like side tables. So I, I'm, a, I'm quite specific, like right now, I'm really trying to find some architectural sketches from sort of Georgian or early Victorian era. And funny enough, can't find the one eBay, which is often a really great place to find anything. Um, if, if you know the kind of search term, then you can get to it. But um, that's I always find that when you're when you're searching for something specific, you can never find it. No, what on eBay? Or just in general. But if you're sort of if you walk into a store and you're like, Oh, I'm just here to browse, you come home with like 10 things. But if you're looking for it's something true. specific, it's forever. Yes, and that's the beauty of it. Although I did learn, and I think this is a good tip for anyone who watching who also likes antiques, is ask the antique dealers because they all know each other. It's a very small industry, and I think they're pretty sharing. So, for example, our dining room is very long and thin, and it took me ages to find the right... I knew what I wanted, sort of a, a Victorian table with balloon back chairs and the guy I think I bought something else off it off him like something completely different he said oh I know the chap that specializes in those he's up north his name's Dave here's his number and so you can kind of get I would never have found Dave otherwise you know it's good to ask people <laughs> in the know <laughs> well that's your journalism background working for you just asking questions <laughs> yes, inspector Cluso <laughs> now um I know you're going to give us like a little peek around your room, but before that, when you were house hunting, I read that this was the second house you saw before purchasing it. And tell me more about this story. Was it, is it true that you were crying as you were coming up the driveway because you knew that this was the house? I did. So embarrassing. I, we, so we had looked online for about a year and a half from LA. And then I think you get to the point where it's like, right, we need to go now and look at things in the flesh because everything looks different in a photo. And um, it was midsummer. It was like England looked beautiful. All the flowers were out. It was blue skies and people outside in the pubs. So it kind of showed itself off really well. And we did, we looked at one that I thought would be the dream home and it wasn't. I didn't get any butterflies when we went in. It's so ironic. And then we drove into this one and I, did, I got this overwhelming emotional reaction. And I got, I did get teary. And I just said before we'd even got out of that car, I was like, this is it. This is it. This is our house. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband was like, okay, can you just chill out? Because I can't really negotiate very well when you're in floods. Of tears. If you're just saying, where do I sign? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but it was, it really is a very pretty house inside and out. And it's got a lovely feeling. I think houses all have a bit of a soul, you know? 
So, sure, yeah. sure. And yeah. I, it's a powerful story about just like the importance of home. Uh, and you found it, luckily, uh, moving back. Yeah. So yeah. you are in your drawing room, is that right? Yes. So um, this, so the, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, um, tell us a little bit about the room. And I know that your favorite piece of furniture is in this room, I believe. Yes, and I hope it's not too messy. Um, so <laughs> the house is um, Georgian. Uh, but the drawing room was added, I mean, it's ironic to say it's like an extension because it was still added about 200 years ago. But it is actually a bit more grand than the rest of the house. The rest of the house is more farmhousey and cosy. And the, I will show you, there's a very beautiful ceiling rose. And oh, wow. we actually, um, so that, so the story behind that is, it was originally there. Then our elderly neighbor who used to live in the house told us it was, fell down in a flood years and years ago and no one ever replaced it. So I managed to find the sort of original makers of that and they, make, they remade the same mold and replaced that. I'll show you around a little bit. Um, we ripped up the carpets and the original floorboards are, excuse my dodgy camera work, anyway, under there. No, that's okay, if you need to, I think you can also flip it. Flip it, good, good idea. Let me just tidy up my desk a little bit. Um, so yes, my favorite piece of furniture in the whole house I'm going to show you now is actually a bureau desk that I found again before the house in a, um, antique shop in a place called Petworth, if you ever go to England and it's so beautiful. I it's fell gorgeous. It and I, I got the guy to hold on to it for me for about six months because I was like, I need this. And then this chair I found in an antique shop called the Dorking Desk Shop in Dorking. And I had that re-upholstered with some fabric that I found in Paris years ago and held on to. Um, this is our original. The desk looks like it's in place. perfect condition. Yes, it is. It really is. So it's been looked after, but these are all original glass panels. So you can see they're a bit wavy and it's over, it's about, 350 years old it's really old <laughs> that and and did you actually did i read that you had the store keep it for you for six months because you weren't yeah ready. you're you so home you're amazing you've done lots oh. of research i did i was like look i love it and i'll buy it but you have to hold it you have to keep it for me because i'm not ready yet so he was like okay <laughs> <laughs> well what a good guy um yeah. and that's where you do all your work exactly i think often um drawing rooms tend to not be used or, or living rooms it's like the room that doesn't have a tv in it that you know you're technically supposed to be sitting reading in but you don't really do that in real life so I wanted to um you make sure I used it so I this is my office as well it's the most beautiful office why would you ever want to work anywhere else totally um i sorry I interrupted you before you were going to show off your fireplace Yep, so I'll carry on. So this is our, this is, let me just turn it around again. The original fireplace. So that is a couple of hundred years old. Um, I've also got, oh, I, I know it's simple, but cane chairs like that are my absolute favorite thing. I've got them dotted all around the house, sometimes with books and lamps on, but I think they, they frame things very nicely. Um, I don't know if you can see these, but these pictures, that's the kind of thing I'm looking for right now. So if anyone can help me find, that would be brilliant. And, and did you frame those also, yourselves or were they already framed? No, I found those really cheaply already framed in a junk shop. Um, this leather ottoman we brought with us from LA. It's from Restoration Hardware and all the um, books. I love that match striker. I've just kind of yeah. got a mix of things really. That's a Tory Birch dish. And these are antiques that were my great grandmothers. And then I layered a couple of rugs. So this rug you see here is from a shop called Oka, O-K-A, um, over the sisal. So we've got sisal rugs all over the house as well. Um, and I then... love that because I find that sisal rugs aren't that comfortable, but if you put another rug on top, it's much more soft. That's a really good point, actually. I really like the look, but it, also, it is actually a practicality as well, especially with little ones running yeah, around. Yeah, sure. Um, and I'll show you one of the last things. So that, those chests are traditionally for bedrooms, and I, just, I like switching it up a bit with antiques, because really there shouldn't be any rules. Um, and so I brought that in here, 
there's another cane chair. <laughs> um, <laughs> two matching lamps are from a store called India Jane. And then I switched out the lampshades. Um, these grapes, you probably recognize, there, you see quite a lot of those in the States, or in LA anyway. And they, I bought those sure. at a flea market in the US. And that was my great grannies as well. So I, I do have lots of family bits around. Oh, and sorry, can't forget this. The most important part of the room. The cocktail oh. drawing. Every, every home, I should say. I was about to say every room needs a bar cart. Every home needs <laughs> I a bar cart. <laughs> totally. So this is another cheap antique. I mean, I say cheap. I bought it at a fair, a Christmas antique fair. And the guy said it had actually been forgotten about for 50 years in a building on a farm and it's got scalloped edges which I absolutely love and then these barley twist legs and I've just stacked it full of booze and glasses um yes I love you it you just couldn't buy anything today new as beautiful as that well I agree with you but a lot of people don't love Brown but I love things that are old because you give it in a way a second, a second or a third or fourth, depending on how old the item is. I mean, it's been just cleaned up and it, it breathes new life again. They, and when you really polish um, antique wood, which isn't that hard, I think it, it, it does breathe new life into it. And you think about somebody made that by hand, you know, machines weren't really making things way back then. Actually, one sure. more tip um, about this, and I did a little video about this. When I bought it, um, it had the most disgusting, um, I've completely forgotten the name of the word, but for the little wheels, casters. They were gigantic white casters. So I went to another antique shop that has sort of loads of, it's one of those shops that's got drawers full of old door knockers and handles and, and knobs for drawers. And I bought these casters and had them changed and it transformed the whole thing. It looks completely different because of that. So small details that you can change, you know. Well, speaking of small details that can make a big change, it's interesting. Your wall color is brick, is the name of it. How did you decide on that color? It's stunning. I may not have been drawn to it immediately when looking at it in a paint can, but it's so gorgeous on the walls. And it's incredible how a, the wall color can dramatically change your room. Like if the, if the wall were gray, the room would feel entirely different. But I don't know, it has a warmth to it. How did you decide on that color? You're so right. I mean, it was cream before and the room just feels so different. Um, I, I think I had a picture on my phone and I, I just wanted to find that same color because when it's dark and the lamps are on, it's really cozy and it kind of comes in. But then when it's morning and you open the shutters, it's really fresh color. So it changes, changes with the light. But um, I then found out about Edward Bulmer paints and they're one of my favorite paint brands because he's basically an, an incredibly talent, talented um, interior designer and historian and he does all these big national trusts sort of castles and palaces which is insane but he realized how toxic paint was and he created his own brand that's um, you know safe in terms of chemicals and things so and then he had this color which you can kind of see there so um, but it, it, to be honest, it wasn't a very long decision. I was like, done, tick, yes. <laughs> um, what's been the hardest part about either doing the little renovations or decorating the house? Um, I think we've been so lucky because most people have a nightmare with their builders. And actually, we found great guys that, that tended to stick to deadlines. So that is one thing That's we great. swerved. I mean, like everybody, COVID was not great. We had a half built, um, we added on a little um, orangery at the back and that sort of stood half built all that time. But really I can't complain because everybody went through the same stuff. So I think honestly, um, maybe just the cost, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I have managed to save on some things. I did, I have to say, I slashed out on things like curtains. And I remember once my husband saw the bill for our bedroom and he said well that's the whole house though right and I was like yeah um moving on but but I've also got loads of bargains so I feel like it balance balances out <laughs> just keep going to the junk shops and looking for the deals <laughs> exactly um exactly. Louise this was such a treat to see a little sneak peek of your house and congratulations on the feature in uh, house and garden was that a pinch kind of moment for you 
Yes, yeah, it was because that is my Bible and I absolutely love it. Um, so that was really cool. But I want to see your house. It looks gorgeous. Look at behind <laughs> me. I mean, uh, it's like uh, so much junk. Um, oh, it's I'm beautiful. Sort of, it's very elegant. I'm kind of like a hoarder. It's small, but it's, it, thank you very much. I, um, it's funny. I kind of mix things a lot from traveling um things that i find like on the street in tribeca or the west village i have found um paintings and plates that it's, it's unbelievable what people will throw out um i know so and 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 people will come over and they'll say where did you get that painting and i say i found it on the street i mean i give it a good scrub and i clean it up yeah. but, um, that's I, amazing and, and i don't really sort of I have no formal education in design. I just love how things come together. And I kind of just buy what I love. And I, my motto is kind of that if you love it, it, you will find a way to make things work together. Absolutely. And you do. No, I, I think that's brilliant. You just love it. I've, I've seen a few great um, antique shops further up on the East Coast. There are better antiques up on that side of America than on the West. <laughs> Well, I just got back from Maine and I just like, my husband loves the outdoors and he was dragging me on like hikes every day. I was like, I cannot do one more hike. So I am going to go into this little town and just scour some antique shops. And I found like little treasures. And that just makes me so happy when you find that little diamond in the rough, like in the back of the store underneath something for $10 and you really know it's real value. I mean, that to me is just like perfection. I think we're kindred spirit. <laughs> I, I would agree. That's why I was so drawn to your beautiful home. Love it. Um, well, oh. Louise, thank you again um, for chatting. And everybody, thank you for watching. It was so fun. Thanks for having me. It was awesome. You're welcome. And I look forward to watching your Instagram stories where you show off your little antiques at uh, your junk shops yeah. that you find. More to come soon. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Louise. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.